everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with our YouTube series that's called The Key Components of Revival. I hope you've been enjoying this series, especially if you are a revival holic like me, or if you are a glory holic like I am. I love Jesus. I love the more of God. I love seeing God move. And we are living in such unprecedented times. So let me tell you, get in the river of revival. Get in the stream of God's move. Amen. And today on episode five, I want to talk to you today about soul winners. When there is a genuine revival, a genuine move of God, there will be souls that are won to the kingdom. Revival is actually warfare. People think revival is worship and healing miracles and it's awesome, but revival is actually warfare. Revival is an act of war against the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because yes, believers gather, the ecclesia assembles, and then as worship prays, as prayer goes up, we're snatching souls from the pit of hell. We're taking back God's children from the pit of hell. So revival is seeing souls won. It's not a true revival if we're not seeing regions touched, changed, and transformed. You don't just want churchy Christian people in the four walls of a building to be touched and to experience the Holy Ghost. No, we want it to spill over. We want it to spill outside. Many people have talked with me and shared, and I've heard from the podium, that one of the things about Toronto Blessings was that millions of people were touched inside the four walls. Christians, but barely nobody outside of the church heard about this revival or this renewal, this awakening. A true genuine revival will see unbelievers, heathens, pagans, new agers, homosexuals. We'll see people filled with antichrist, demons, demonized people. A true revival will see people on the streets get saved. People that do not know Jesus come to the Lord. Did you know that there's still a staggering percentage count, a staggering amount of people, even in America today, that have never heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Let me tell you, it's time for us to preach the good news. It's time for us to preach the gospel. I want to tell you, the gospel works. The reason why so many churches lack power is because they do not preach the gospel. They preach a form of godliness. They preach self-help messages. They preach like they have these three, five, seven, ten points, like they are intellectual TED Talk scholars. I'm sorry, we are not called to be motivational speakers. We're called to be preachers of the gospel. And there is a preaching anointing that comes upon men and women of God when they step into that evangelistic, that herald, that ambassador, that prophetic grace. When you step into the ambassadorial anointing, you become a mouthpiece of God. When you have the heart of Jesus, then you will begin to speak the words of God to people who have never heard this message. In the book of Romans, it says, how can they believe if they have not heard? How can they hear if they have not been spoken? How can they speak if they have not been sent? How can they believe if they have not heard? We need to send. We need to commission. We need to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations and, and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is Jesus' great commandment. That is Yeshua's last words to his people before he ascended to the right hand of the Father. We must be soul winners. The Apostle Paul told his spiritual son Timothy, he said, even though you are a bishop and an overseer of churches in this region, always be an evangelist. Always be a soul winner. Don't ever stop talking about the good news to unbelievers. Don't ever stop winning souls to Jesus Christ. Always be red hot on fire. Always be bold. Always preach the gospel. Don't ever be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God of salvation. First to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. I am not ashamed. 
Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed to be a Christian? Do you hide your faith under a bushel? Do you hide your light under a basket? Or do you remove the basket, remove the bushel, and are you proud to be a believer? Are you grateful to shine and to shine unto the world the glorious good news of what Jesus has done for you? When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody? When's the last time you shared the good news of Jesus Christ? When's the last time you brought somebody to the Lord? Yes, I agree. Sometimes these methods can be like little trinket prayers. These little, you know, the Lord's Prayer or these methods, these one, two, three steps. I agree. These are just methods to help people understand the fundamental foundations of how to share the gospel. But let me tell you, don't put down the method but rather bring up the message. We need to share the message. We need to share the word. We need to preach, not ourselves, but we need to preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I love the words of Apostle Paul. This apostle said, I will not preach anything except the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what makes our Christian, Judeo-Christian faith different from every other religion on earth. Jesus, a human being, sent from heaven above, a sinless man, he died on the cross for our sins as a propitiation, as the scapegoat for all the world, as a Passover lamb, and he died, was buried, three days later, resurrected. That is the good news. That is what makes us different from Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, New Age, even uh, strong, staunch Judaism. We believe Jesus is the Hamashiach. Yeshua is the Mashiach. Jesus is the Messiah. People of God, this is the word. And when we begin to preach, miracles follow. It's not a true revival. If only Christians, oh, yes, wow. If only Christians are getting touched. If only Christians are being renewed, awakened, that's not a revival. A revival sees souls come to Jesus. Are you a soul winner? When's the last time you preached the gospel? Have you ever preached the gospel? Yes, in other countries, in Uganda, South Africa, Pakistan, India. Absolutely, the nations, the 1040 window still needs to hear the gospel. China, Tibet, Bhutan, Nepal, all the Stans, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan. Yes, but what about in America? What about your neighbor down the street? There's nothing more pleasurable than being a soul winner. Because when you bring souls to Jesus, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. The heavens celebrate. The angels, the cloud of witnesses, they rejoice when one soul repents and comes to Jesus. Amen. Praise God for the miracles. Praise God when we see the notable miracles, the signs and wonders, when someone's raised from the dead, when the lame walk, amen. But there's no greater miracle than seeing somebody become born again. I love this passage here, Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name and cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. That passage literally means when you preach the gospel, these signs will follow. Preach, then demonstrate. Preach, don't explain. I'm done with trying to debate, I demonstrate. I'm done with trying to explain. I don't need to explain, I just demonstrate it. 
We walk in it. Step in and God will show up and show off. Let the anointing do the work. Let the good news put God on the spot. Put Jesus, put a demand, preach the gospel. Elijah said, my God is a God who answers by fire. He will release fire from heaven and shame and put down all of the false prophets of Baal and Jezebel. My God is a God who answers by fire. Do you have that authority? Do you have that confidence? Do you believe that when you stand before these unbelievers that God's going to do something because God is your father and heaven will back you up when you are not ashamed of being his child? There's no greater joy than being a soul winner. And a genuine revival will see the city, the lowest places, the darkest, hardest, difficult places, the homeless, the impoverished, the street people, the gangbangers, the prostitutes, the pimps. Wasn't it Jesus who spent time with the least of these? Wasn't it Jesus that ate fellowship with the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the adulterers, the sinners, the Gentiles, the goyim, and all the Pharisees and Sadducees, even his own disciples. <gasps> Jesus, how can you talk with a Gentile? This is against the law of Moses. Jesus, how can you sit with lepers? with people that are unclean. Jesus, don't be doing that. But Jesus broke the law because he fulfilled the law, because he is the law of love. And when there's a revival, there's the Father's heart, there's love. And when there's love, we have a love for the lost. We have a love for the poor. We have a love for the disenfranchised. For the least of these, we have a love for the rejected, the neglected, the hurt, the broken, the poor, those that are darkened, that have never heard the gospel. If you truly love something, don't you want to share it with your friends? Hey guys, I just got this awesome secret. I got the secret to lose weight. I got this new secret to save some money and to make more money. When you have a Eureka Aha secret, don't you want to share it with the world? Don't you want to post it on Instagram? Don't you want to share it on social media? Be an evangelist. Be a soul winner. Be somebody who's not afraid to be with people that are different from you from your culture, your skin color, your language. Apostle Paul said, I want to become all things to all people so that I might win a few of them, Jesus. To the Romans, I became Roman. To the Catholics, I became Catholic. To those in the bars, I became like those in the bars. It doesn't mean you go into sin. It just means you understand and relate with them eye to eye instead of preaching down to them or preaching at them. You begin to connect with them and become like them. People do not want to know what you know unless they know that you love them. I don't care about how much you know until I, I know how much you care about me. It's love. Love, love compels us to go. It was love that compelled Jesus to keep going and carry the cross. It's love. And that's what revival is. It's revival of love. Loving our neighbor, loving the poor, the lost, loving the gospel. I don't ever want to take the good news for granted. America needs the good news. No more fake news, no more false news, fear-mongering news. We need the good news 
of the gospel. Let the heralds preach in the middle of the streets. <laughs> extra, extra, read all about it. Jesus is risen. There's a healer in town. Extra, extra, read all about it. Let it be once again, Lord. And that's what revival is. Don't preach yourself. Preach Jesus. Stop talking about money. Talk about the kingdom. Stop talking about self-help. Uh, Shock out about that lousy, mushy stuff. Talk about Jesus. Jesus is enough. Jesus is everything. It's Jesus, period. <laughs> Preach Jesus and all will be drawn to him. The Bible says, when the name of Jesus is lifted high, all men will be drawn to him. Are people being drawn to you? Or are people being drawn to Jesus? Let's give all glory to God. Let's stop with the celebrity Christianity. Celebrity Christian influencers. Oh, just stop. Use what God has given you to help raise others up into their purpose and their calling with the Lord. Let's be soul winners. How many souls have you won? In the last five years, our ministry, we have seen over 700,000 souls saved. Crusades, mass evangelism, missions, street evangelism. But now for Benlam Ministries, our vision till the end of this decade, till the end of December 2029, is to see 10 million souls saved. Believe with us for this great harvest of souls. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Will you be a laborer in the harvest field of God? They're ripe. They're ready. People are waiting for you. People are waiting to hear. Yes, there'll be persecution. There'll be some rejection. Some people will mock you, scoff you. But blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are you a soul winner? When revival comes or hits a church, ministry, a region, a town. People become soul winners. Let me tell you about the one that I love. I don't know it by head. I know it in here. I don't know Jesus by book theories. I know Jesus by personal encounter. He saved me. He touched me. He healed me. He delivered me. He is my Savior. I want to pray for you right now that you will be ignited to win souls. I challenge you. Bring one person to Jesus every day. One soul a day. Come on, somebody. And that becomes so contagious. That becomes so shocker. That begins to oh, keep you on fire. There's nothing like winning souls. You want to see miracles? Go out in the streets. Preach the gospel. You want to see God move? Preach the gospel. You want to be more on fire for God? Preach the gospel. It doesn't come like going to another conference. Yes, I believe in impartation, corporate assembly worship. But being on fire for God comes by talking about him to others. Are you talking more about the news, about current day politics, or are you talking about Jesus? He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, that joy that floods my soul. Something happens. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. God, I pray, touch your people now. Put a fire in their bones. The day would be burning for souls. 
Give me souls or I die. In the words of a Leonard Ravenhill, give me souls or I'll die. Give me the nations. Give me regions. Give me America. Give me Pakistan. Give me Los Angeles. Give me Miami. Give me New York. Give me Seattle. Give me Chad. Give me souls or I'll die. Can you be like that wheat that dies in the ground so that you will reap a harvest? I pray that you will catch this and be a soul winner. Let God use you for extraordinary. You don't need a mic, you don't need a platform. Just go, just be. Wherever you are, that is your pulpit. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here with episode five called Soul Winners on our series, The Key Components of Revival. A true revival will see the lost saved. Let's have burning hearts to see the world come to Jesus Christ. People of God, let me know if this encouraged you, if you caught the fire for evangelism. And I pray that God will raise up more revivalists and evangelists with the heart of God for souls. Comment below what blessed you, what encouraged you. And do hit that like, subscribe button. Thank you for being a friend, a follower of this ministry. I love you. And thank you for watching. Until next time, God bless you.